never give in. Never, never, never. I am actually stood on top of the passageway that ran between the actual OB and it's phase two if you wish which means the shaft is just down there okay right first of all I'll give you a geographical swing around okay looking at the same hills there's your radio beacons in the distance coming up there's Lanyon Farm and Mr Thomas's back door but as you can see from above, from up on the main moorland, you've now got to be very close to be able to drop down on it or actually surprise someone going in and out. So it's perfect location really. Um, that's another shaft just there. And Kangal was over yonder. So, right, I'm taking you into the OB. I know this has been done on a previous film. But we'll do it on the GoPro as well. So what we found up to now Okay, bit of pot. We didn't find the dog. That's come with me. It wasn't part of it. Um, see the bit of pipe there? Fits readily into this piece of concrete here, which I'm pretty sure was their toilet mounting. Okay? Um, right, as you can see here. One thing that's puzzling me, and unfortunately Margaret, when I spoke to her, she was only sort of 10 years old when she came into here, and she can remember going through from here, um, through... The operational base here into you can just make out the passageway just starting to go as you can see it narrows quite a bit there um, we'll take you through there in a minute so she can't really remember a lot she can remember the bunk beds but she can't remember a lot more but this is what intrigues me okay you've got the shaft obviously trap door hawthorn etc um, but it's this breeze block coming out here this intrigues me because when you look beneath it, it almost looks like there would have been a doorway here. But on the other hand, you've got this run of concrete, which could almost, you could have said, mass, uh, matched um, a Nissan hut. But it can't be, because as you can see, the walls are set back from each other. So this is coming out. It's, if I didn't know better, I would have said that there was a doorway going through here, and they came in around the back here. And into the Nissan hut. A lot of straight edge stone, right? So what I'm going to show you down in here now is you can see I've dug out a narrow trench. Now if you look in that narrow trench you can just make out one flat stone, right? Well all those other flat stones I think came in along that edge so they formed a bit of a gully and that's what the Nissan hut sat in. Okay, right what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through it for the minute come dog right these interest me because they're they're here and there's no apparent reason for them being here so we're going to dig around here now we've got two choices here the dog is lovely demonstrating I suppose it's better than looking at my ugly mug um, this is where you start to go through in the passage now technically if we were to have dug this to the floor level of the breeze block then you would be able to walk through as the dog is walking through, but obviously as an upright human being, okay? You would have still needed, though, I personally, you would have still needed, I think, a good three foot above your head of solid soil. Because when I go looking for underground, if I go looking for wells or shafts or anything like that, if they're less than three foot, if they're covered less than three foot, then you do get a hollow boom still. So, you know, there is a possibility that if it had been less than three foot above their head, then the Germans could somehow have come across it. They, they could have discovered it. So, they would have come in along this section here and around. Now, I'm going to very slowly move the camera up gorse comes into view, that's the next stage of it. So below the gorse there is the entrance to a shaft which is actually, the shaft itself is just over the top of that mini hawthorn and gorse tree, literally eight feet the other side of that. Um, but they would have gone in and out through here, they could have used the open shaft 
as an exit as well. They could have even turned it. It looks like it's been capped by them. It doesn't look like it's been capped by the miners in the past or the settlers that were that would have tim streamed here. It's big granite and the way the granite's formed it looks like it comes down to a small square opening or would have come down to a small square opening. Um, it would have made sense, like Gareth Wern said, that to make a defensive position there, that way if the Germans came in on the walled shaft behind, they would have had a slim possibility of making a fighting retreat. Um, and they may have survived, they may not, depends on how many in the patrol came across them and how heavily armed, etc. So, we know also now um, that they couldn't have travelled down the Adit and I've spoken to Lanyon Thomas's daughter and she can remember coming into this bunker and she doesn't remember any more than one mine shaft and we, myself and Ali Neal have looked at a lot of the shafts going down the valley and they're too blocked, it would have been too major a task. Right, this is where they went into the shaft. So I'm going to hop in there and see what we can do. You see, this is the other problem with this, what I've found now. When we first found this um, a few weeks ago, quite a few weeks ago now, it was actually flooded right up to the hilt here with water. And we've had a reasonable amount of water, but not a hefty amount of water, just recently after the water drained. And already um, water's starting to come in here again uh, from just to my right here. So they would have had the added problem that using the shaft would have been... In heavy rains they would have flooded fairly quick. So how much they use the shaft is another matter. It could be that they just use this upper area. Um, let me drop in, I'll take some photos, and then I'll come back out again. This is the shaft, as you can see, it's only 16 foot or so to the surface. And you can probably hear the water just coming in. You see, look how it's coming in now. There's quite a hefty amount of water coming in from somewhere. So I'm quite curious as to where a big hole the other side of that granite. So it might be a digging job one day just to see what it is doing. But it wouldn't have been like this when the lads came in, if they came in at all. It's quite slitty in there with water, and it's just pouring from that direction somewhere. Lots of it now. That'll be flooded again if it doesn't stop soon. Be flooded again within the week. Just down there is the hole that I've just come out of. You can possibly just make it out below the gorse there, okay? This is giving you a bit of an upper shot of the area I said it looked like they probably did use for storage because the passageway from their wall, as you can see, I'll show you over here. There's the wall, okay? And there's, by my bags, is where the passageway comes around. It comes just the other side of that hawthorn. And he comes in around here. Now I think they may have made a small square there and then leveled it off and made it appear like it was higher than it actually is, the roof. And that was a way into the shaft. I'm still not convinced they could have used this shaft. Like I said, there's, a, there's quite a bit of water coming in there already and we've had quite a few dryish days. Um, this is just an idea of strategic value. This will be one of them. All around us, we're up on the top of the moors. So you've got the high ground. And on really good days, I'll get another view for you. On really good days, you can see the whole coast. It's all mining territory, but the good thing with the mining territory is you have got good pools of water as well, high up. So you'd never actually um, run out of water supply. They're already installed, or they were installed during the war. But this is what one of the things you could be looking for, because I don't know just how much it's picking up, but you can see way in the distance. And if I was to walk up to the next corner, you would see down over Penzance, Mounts Bay. So it'd be a very good position up here to place um, a very large artillery. Um, section and you would control all the lowlands and you will be able to see 
it will be very difficult to move through these lowlands without the Germans knowing. So that's probably one of the strategic values up here, will be the high ground, as always, in all wars. This is looking back over towards the direction I live in. Um, as you can see, I've, you'll probably make it out, St Michael's Mount just sitting offshore there. So, you know, just from this one location, I've not moved more than 100 yards from where I took the last shot. You're already looking now down across the bay, Newlyn. So you, you've got a lovely post up here.